And now for something completely different. Motty Payton's Flying Circus! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Monty Python TV moments. For this list, we're only including the best sketches from Monty Python's TV career. So grab your dead parrot, bust out the spam, and let's get the funny walk started. I think that's in very bad taste. Number 10, Upper Class Twit of the Year. Well, it certainly looks as though we're in for a splendid afternoon sport in this, the 127th Upper Class Twit of the Year show. This sketch is centered around an obstacle course designed for the upper crust of British society. They're off! Oh, no, they're not. No, they didn't realize they were supposed to start. Never mind, we'll soon sort that out. The judge is explaining it to them now. I think Nigel and Gervais have got the idea. All set to go! Because the contenders are, for the most part, completely witless, the race involves such classic Olympic events as kicking the beggar, walking a straight line, and reversing into the old lady. The course concludes with a tricky obstacle, during which the upper class twits must shoot themselves in the head. And there's Nigel! Nigel shot himself! Nigel is third in this high and most exciting upper class twit of the year I have ever seen! Wait, Nigel's clapped himself into fourth place! Number 9. Cheese Shop. Oh, hungry. In a nutshell, so I thought to myself, a little fermented curd will do the trick. So I curtailed my wall polling activities, sallied forth and infiltrated your place of purveyance to negotiate the bending of some cheesy comestibles. Come again? I want to buy some cheese! It's the eternal debate. Cheddar or Swiss, Brie or Edam. Boursin, Brest Bleu, Pelle de Champagne, Camembert. Ah, oh, we do have some Camembert. You do? Excellent. Well, struggle no further because this shop offers none of them. Oh! What? The cat's eating it. <laughs> Cleverly disguised as a purveyor of cheese, Michael Palin's character comes up with increasingly convoluted reasons for his store's obvious lack of stock. I'll have a look, sir. Mm, no. As John Cleese runs through a frankly impressive list of cheeses, Liptar, no. Lancashire, no. White Stilton, no. the situation grows grim when it becomes obvious he won't be getting what he came for. Uh, tell me something. Do you have any cheese at all? Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to ask you that question once more. <laughs> and if you say no, I'm going to shoot you through the head. Now, do you have any cheese at all? No. What a senseless waste of human life. Oh, yes. Number eight, argument clinic. I'd like to have an argument, please. Certainly, <laughs> Have you been here before? No, this is my first time. Seemingly an exercise in futility, Michael Palin walks into a clinic whose sole purpose is to provide unpleasant social experiences. Is this the right one for an argument? I've told you once. <laughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. When? Just now. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Didn't. I did. I didn't. I'm telling you, I did. You did not. Oh, I'm sorry, is this a five-minute argument or the full half hour? The character pays good money to engage in a squabble, but the situation doesn't go his way. No, this isn't an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's just contradiction. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It is not. It is! Obviously, they didn't have a YouTube comment section in those days. If you're arguing, I must have paid. Not necessarily. I could be arguing in my spare time. <laughs> Oh, I've had enough of this. No, you haven't. Oh, shut up. <laughs> right. Carry on, Sergeant Major. Stop! Number seven. Self-defense against fresh fruit. Flu! Flu! I've been eating too much fresh fruit! What's more terrifying than an armed mugger? When you're all walking home tonight and some homicidal maniac comes after you, when a bunch of Logan Brace don't come crying to me! In this sketch, John Cleese shows us how to successfully throw off a possible fruit attack armed with nothing but our wits, some ingenuity, and a secret technique. Come on, attack me! Come on! Come on! Yeah. Come on! Yeah. Sadly, lunatics armed with fresh fruit might be ready for that old trick. So it's important to improvise with what you got. Now, the first thing to do when you're being stalked by an ugly mob with raspberries is to release the tiger! Number six, candid photography, also known as Nudge Nudge. Is your wife uh, a goer, hey? 
Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Nudge, 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 nudge. Know what I mean? Say no more. Know what I mean? Terry Jones is just trying to enjoy his drink in a bar when another patron accosts him. And Eric Idle only has one thing on his mind. Your wife interested in uh, photographs, eh? Hey? Know what I mean? Photographs? He asked him knowingly. A brief line of questioning ensues, where it becomes obvious what Idle wants to talk about. <laughs> Look, are you insinuating something? Oh, 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 yes. This classic sketch brings us a line we still know and use today, and also spoofs the prudish mindset of the time. I mean, like, you know, you, you slept with a lady. Yes. What's it like? No. Time, please. Oh, yes, I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Number five, the Ministry of Silly Walks. Good morning. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but I'm afraid my, uh, my walk has become rather sillier recently, and so it takes me rather long. There are no words to define this classic sketch, but here are some anyway. The Python troops send up their very own British government in usual fashion when Michael Palin attempts to subsidize a new silly walk he's perfecting. I see. Uh, may I see your silly walk? Yes, certainly, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just not silly enough. It's not particularly silly, is it? As proven by John Cleese's own impressively flexible stride. Mr. Pudy, the very real problem <laughs> is one of money. I'm afraid that the Ministry of Security is no longer getting the kind of support that it needs. You see, there's defense, social security, health, housing, education, city wars. They're all supposed to be but last year, the government spent less on the Ministry of Security than it did on national defense. The sketch pokes fun at the seemingly impractical nature of the government at the time. I'm going to offer you a research fellowship on the Anglo-French city walk. La marche futile. Hey, voilà, la. <laughs> Number four, the funniest joke in the world. In a few moments, he will have written the funniest joke in the world. And, as a consequence, he will die laughing. <laughs> Very much a product of post-World War II British society, the Pythons go back to their roots in this vignette about a joke so funny it literally kills. It was obvious that this joke was lethal. No one could read it and live. There are precautions to be followed when going near this joke. I shall enter the house and attempt to remove the joke. <laughs> in fact, it's so deadly, it was soon translated to German and used on the battlefront. Fein ist das Fortunately, the Germans weren't able to synthesize their own deadly gag. Nein, schreck der Herren, ist auch ein Burger mit Zweitingen. We let you know. Ah, morning, morning, sir. Morning, morning. I'll um, I'll, I'll, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> Number three, homicidal barber, the lumberjack song. Oh, it just stalled me short back insides. <laughs> it's not a um, a razor cut. Razor, 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 razor cut. The spurred artery murder. <laughs> Enter a man who never wanted to be a barber anyway, who dreamed of nothing but experiencing the great outdoors. Leaping from tree to tree as they float down the mighty rivers of British Columbia. All he wanted was to sing and frolic in the forests and name all the trees he could. The mighty Scots pine! The smell of fresh cut timber! Michael Palin is a man's man, a virile lumberjack who... Wait a second. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. Unfortunately, Palin's dream isn't shared by the rest of the cast. I cut down trees or wear high heels, suspend his and a bra. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear mama. 
I cut down trees when I heal when the sands are broad. Oh, shut me Number two, spam. I don't like spam! Doesn't this happen to everyone? A cross-dressing Graham Chapman sits down in a restaurant and orders breakfast, only to discover there's just one thing on the menu. Could I have egg, bacon, spam and sausage without the spam? It's a post-war lampoon of the country's overstock of spam, and also a delightful sing-along with some memorable lyrics. Spam, 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 baked beans, spam, 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 and spam. Don't say it too often, though, or else, Vikings. Before we name our pick for the upper class twit of the year, here are a few honorable mentions. Cardinal, hmm. poker with the soft cushion. <laughs> Confess. <laughs> Fear of a new kind of violence, which is terrorizing the city. Yes, gangs of old ladies attacking defenseless, fit young men. We have been given a dirty, filthy, smelly piece of cotton. What is smelly? It was smelly and obscene and disgusting. And I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Nasty, grubby, dirty, mangy, scrubby little dog. What? No. <sighs> Number one, dead parrot sketch. It's not, it's, it's pining. It's not pining, it's passed on. <laughs> this parrot is no more. How many different ways can you say dead? It's expired and gone to meet its maker. <laughs> this is a late parrot. This sketch is an exercise in synonyms as John Cleese attempts to return a slightly defective parrot. Oh, yes, the Norwegian blue. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's dead. Ever the appeasing shop owner, Michael Palin tries to assuage his customer's assertion that the bird is, well, dead. If it's resting, I'll wake it up. Hello, Polly. I got a nice cuttlefish for you when you wake up, Polly Parrot. Then it moved. No, it didn't. Maybe one of their most popular sketches of all time, Dead Parrot is a timeless struggle between customer and seller about faulty merchandise. Well, I'd better replace it then. <laughs> if you want to get anything done in this country, you've got to complain to your blue in the mouth. <laughs> Sorry, Gov, we're right out of parrots. Do you agree with our list? This is getting too silly. Quite agree, quite agree. Silly, silly, silly. Right. Get on with it. Get on with it. What's your favorite Monty Python sketch? My hovercraft is full of eels. For more hilarious top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Well, that's all for now. And so until next week. <laughs>